Let us go to greater faith in New Albany. Here we are to be with your wonderful pastor. And I've often said, if you love the master, you'll love your pastor. And I believe that you do. To see what God's doing in the church, in the kingdom, here and all over the world. Jesus is not coming back for a sick widow languishing on the hospital bed of affliction and kept alive by organizational iron lungs and some kind of recitation but he's coming back for a bride that's victorious and glorious and overcoming and I want to be a part of that bride you may be seated uh as you know, I write books, and that's part of my ministry. My latest book, maybe I had it last time, I don't know, Seasons of Sundays. There's one chapter on there entitled One Wicked Woman. That's a lesson on uh, grace. I think you'll enjoy that. Years ago, my wife wrote a book, Prayer Takes Wings, How to Enlist Angelic Assistance in Your Prayers to bring angels into prayer zone, and she just reprinted it about a year ago. Water from an old well, and uh, several DVDs and uh, CDs out there of messages that uh, Sister Tina and I have preached. And here's one CD, Let the Redeemed of the Lord Dress So. It's not legalistic, but it's biblical. We're living in a day when Victoria doesn't have any secrets. <laughs> well, it's the truth anyhow. <laughs> bless you, bless you, Pastor. And uh, I trust that you will open your hearts this morning to the Word of God. I want to read from Colossians chapter 3. Third chapter of Colossians 3, and I'll begin with verse 12. Put on, therefore, and one translation says, clothe yourself in as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind. Meekness, long-suffering, what a wardrobe. He said, put all this on. Uh, holiness and compassion and mercy. Uh, meekness, wow, long-suffering. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so do ye. And above all, or on top of these all, are as an overcoat put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Now, I want you to notice what another translation of this says. Bear with each other, NIV version. It didn't say be a bear to one another, but bear with each other. Forgive whatever grievance you have against another. Forgive and the Lord shall forgive you. Another translation says, you must make allowances for each other's faults and forgive the person who offends you. My subject this morning is simply this. Get over it. And that's exactly what Paul was saying here. He talked about things that could be done and, and how to get appropriately dressed. And then he said, you got to forgive one another. And he said, you got to put up with one another. And 
Maybe nothing changed, but he just said there's some things that'll come in life that your only option is to get over it. He spoke of meekness, and meekness is the ability to take suffering without injury and to be praised without pride. Meekness. You, you need scripture. Get over it. I'd rather deal with a man that has a poor memory than one that's got a poor forgetter. What happens when you've been good and everything goes bad? Someone wrote a book, Why Does Bad Things Happen to Good People? And getting over it can be a, a challenge, and we know that. A disappointment is reality. Discouragement is reaction. Hurt is reality. Bitterness is reaction. You cannot control what might happen to you, but you can control how you react to it. As I told the group yesterday, bitterness is an acid that always destroys its container. So there's no need to harbor things within you. Uh, in, in this warfare, you're going to be wounded. Who ever heard of a war without casualties? And conflict is neither good nor bad. It's inevitable. And why are we surprised? Biblical faith always comes with problems. You know, it is no secret what God can do. What he did to Jesus, he'll do to you. You say, we say, well, I want to be, a, I want to be like Jesus. Do you know what you've said? If you really want to be like Jesus, then you've got to go through the things Jesus went through. So don't, don't, don't be surprised when you're betrayed or they all forsake you. And don't be surprised whenever the enemy comes against you with their torches. And don't be surprised at your crucifixion, at being lashed and beat. You know, we'll pray that prayer. Lord, I want to be like Jesus. And then all hell breaks loose. And we'll say, oh God, what's the matter? And he says, nothing. I'm just answering your prayer. Because if you're going to be like me, you've got to encounter what I counted and learn to react like I reacted. It's inevitable. All I can tell you is uh, if something happens adverse, cry a river of tears and then build a bridge and get over it. There's some things you can't change and forgiveness is not going back and undoing what's been done. Forgiveness is accepting what's been done and going on from there. And he said, you're waiting for a basis of forgiveness? He said, here it is. Because I forgave you, then you forgive them. It didn't even say if they ask you. But Brother Tenney, I'm going through hell. You know the good thing about going through hell? When you come out, you'll be on fire. And didn't you want to be on fire? You've been wounded and criticized and cold-shouldered. So was Jesus. And, well, you know, there's a lot of people that just won't give me a chance. But God's not like a lot of people. And the first natural urge when you're wronged is to retaliate. But, you know, you're a Christian and you can't externalize it. So often we internalize it and deny that it's there. Well, I got over that a long time ago. I don't even think about that anymore. I'm not bitter. Psst. You know, sometimes we say, well, I got over it. And I've turned it all over to the Lord. But we got one little secret closet in our heart that we've got the key to. And we keep that person, our persons, locked up in that closet. And when nobody's looking, we take the key, unlock the closet, 
pull them out and mentally beat up on them for a few minutes. Think about what, and then we put them back and put the smile on our face. The Lord has come this morning to clean closets. And he wants the key. Because you can be wounded in life. What a, what a God. So, you can't, let, you can't let anger get in your spirit. Do we ever reach the level of, or the maturity at which we learn and understand truth without enduring pain? God learned about us the hard way. He died for us, but we want to learn about him the easy way. You know, the church is the only institution on earth that's designed to bring out the worst in you. What? Yes. Did you ever hear anybody say, I didn't think anything like that could happen in a church. I didn't think that a Christian would talk to me like that. You see, sometimes we have things in us that we don't know are there. And when something happens in the allegedly sterile atmosphere of the church, it brings things out in us that we didn't know were there so that we can deal with it and get over it. So that's why sometimes in the church, the very worst is brought out in us that we didn't know was there. And God's kids have a way of getting under our skin. The, at the Passover, we talk about the lamb that was slain. So we overlook something. The lamb had a side dish in addition to eating the lamb. They had to eat bitter herbs. And there's always going to come some bitter experiences with the lamb. But you don't let it affect you negatively. You let it make you more like him. All things work together for good. To those that love the Lord. 828 Romans. Look at 29. That we might be brought into his image. Things happen to us. To make us look more like him. And how we handle it determines what happens. And Jesus was a great forgiver. You got to know how to take a licking and keep on a ticking. We vie for sympathy and we pitch a pity party. If you have a pity party, there's nobody coming but the devil. And when you whine, you just let the devil know you're in the neighborhood. So my simple admonition is Paul's. Get over it. You can't go back and undo it. A mark of maturity is to understand there's some things that you can't undo. For instance, you can't unring a bell. If a kid in school slips into the mechanical room, high school, and in the middle of a class rings the bell, here comes the principal. Everybody's coming out of class in the middle of the class. Principal comes out in the hall and he raises his voice. Who rung that bell? I demand that you go back and unring the bell. Well, we got two problems. Number one, the kids are out in the middle of a class. And the principal has lost his mind. Because you can't unring a bell. There are things in life that happen that you cannot go back and undo. And your only option, as, as Paul said here, you must make allowances for each other's faults and forgive the person who offended you. That's what it says. Get over it. You know, true forgiveness, when you really know you're forgiven, is when you see somebody 
that's wronged you without pain. Then you know, I've really gotten over it. I buried it under the blood. I'm not going to let it affect my relationship with God. Am I making sense? You know, we vie for sympathy and we don't search God's word for answers. And we've got polite carnal response instead of ministering to one another. You just don't sweat the petty things and don't pet the sweaty things. <laughs> Boy, isn't this profound? <laughs> Get over it. I mean, you, you, you can think about it for a thousand years. You, you know, Jesus said, in this life, you have a hundredfold and persecution. You want a hundredfold? Oh, yeah. Then it comes with a side dish called persecution. Now, you can get persecution without a hundredfold, but you can't get a hundredfold without persecution. And some people say, well, I know I've messed up. God can't use me. I have failed. That's the only people God can use. I don't even want anybody praying for me that doesn't have a problem. They don't know how to pray. They don't. And it, it surprised. One of the most amazing things to me about God is the fellows he hangs out with. Three times the Bible calls Abraham a friend to God. And do you know what Abraham did? He got down in Egypt with his wife, and she was evidently good looking. And he was afraid that the king would want her in his harem. So he said, you just tell him you're my sister. Well, the king did like her. And he allowed the king, didn't tell him he was a wife, to put her in his pretty lady's room. And God revealed to the king, what a man. God, is that your friend? He made a mistake. Moses is the only man that broke all Ten Commandments at one time. <laughs> Didn't he drop the tab tables of stone and break them? <laughs> and yet God used him. Now David, David is mentioned in the New Testament more than any other Old Testament character. But he was a character himself. But every one of these fellas and ladies knew how to repent and move on in a relationship with God. So if you fail, that doesn't mean God can't use you. Get up, get over it, and go on with God. And don't harbor it. In 2 Samuel 23, 34, it says that Eliam was the son of Ahithophel. What's that a big deal? Well, in 2 Samuel eleven three, 3, it says that Eliam was Bathsheba's father. Now, just hang that in your mind. Ahithophel was David's, one of his first lieutenants, right by his side to advise him, maybe for 25 years. But when Absalom's revolution came, Ahithophel, who had been so loyal to David on the surface, turned on him and became the first to capitulate to Absalom. You know what I think happened? I think... Since Bathsheba was his granddaughter, I think he liked Uriah. And he saw how David treated Uriah and had him put to death. And he kept putting on his smile every morning. But there was something harbored in his heart for maybe 25 years that he never got over. 
and he died a suicide. Harboring things and refusing to get over it, even if you've been wrong, is spiritual suicide. Bitterness may or may not affect the person to whom it's directed, but one thing is sure, it will destroy you. I don't know why the Lord wants you to hear this, but he wants you to know, well, Brother Tenny, uh, what are you talking about in my life? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Whatever you're thinking about while I'm preaching. Because I learned a long time ago in preaching, it's not what I say but it's what comes to your mind as a result of the principle that I'm laying out. So, get over it. Is that good advice? Well, take it then. Because if you don't forgive, you destroy the bridge that you yourself must one day cross the overcoat he said on top of all of this cover everything with love that's what holds humility and meekness and kindness intact charity or love never fails some people aren't easy to love but you love them anyhow he spoke here of forgiveness he spoke here of unity. He spoke here of love. Let the peace of God rule. Forgiveness, love, unity, peace, all hatch in a spirit of get over it. If something's haunting you, if something's in your closet, you see, either your faith will move a mountain or your fear will create a mountain. The devil rewards fear just like God rewards faith. Fear is the devil's faith. Well, Brother Tenney, I prayed for that mountain to move. If you pray for a mountain to move and you get up in the morning and look out and it's still there, climb it. I got a rough mountain. My brother, you could not climb a mountain that wasn't rough because there's nothing to hold on to. If God gave you a mountain of crystal, you couldn't climb it. If he gave you a mountain of one solid diamond, you couldn't climb it. But those rough ones, when you got to find a foothold, and thank God there's a bush I can hold on to. I'm going to get over this. You're going to get over it. You're going to climb it. This is not going to destroy me. I'm going to come out of this victorious, loving God. My church, my brothers. Hear this preacher. Nothing is worth losing your soul over. So, we forgive. Years ago, a man told me of an experience he had in a foreign country. They brought a woman that was demon-possessed from way out of the mountains, and she couldn't speak English. She couldn't speak the native language of that country. All she spoke was that dialect of her mountain village and as they brought this woman uneducated toward this man she broke loose with one hand pointed at him and said don't teach the people to forgive in perfect English you know why the devil hates forgiveness forgiveness neutralizes the devil he cannot work in the midst of forgiveness. When Jesus said, Father, forgive, hell broke open and he went down and brought, rescued them. 
The power of forgiveness shook the earth. There was an earthquake. There's no power like the power of forgiveness. Get over it. Get over it. You know, I heard years ago about an old man and woman. They had been married 70 years, I believe it was. They were having a 70th wedding anniversary for him. Everybody was greeting them. One man came up to the old man and said, uh, how in the world have you managed to stay together 70 years? Well, he said, it's like this. The night we married, we agreed that we would never go to bed mad at one another. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, you know. Be ye angry, but sin not. So he said, we made that agreement. We'd never go to bed angry. And he said, well, that's wonderful. He said, yeah. He said, now, there was a lot of nights we got awful tired sitting up all night, but we didn't go to bed. <laughs> Don't let the sun go down. I may have some memories, but I don't have a past. My past is under the blood. Don't let the devil get a toehold, because then he'll get a foothold, and then he'll get a stronghold. Just get over it. It's it's amazing how much extended energy there is over non-eternal issues. I have, in my line of work, had to arbitrate in some church conflicts, unfortunately. Not in New Albany, but <laughs> where there's never a conflict, but... And I have never arbitrated over an eternal issue. My money, my pew, my kids, my rights, my drums, my Sunday school class. But is any of that eternal? Most, most of the things we get pushed out of shape about are not eternal issues. They're just part of life so he said forgive get over it and go on you got to learn to disconnect from some things old brother T.W. Barnes was a figure in my life he's been dead several years now but a woman came to him one time to his office and wanted to counsel. She had been married five times. And she told Brother Barnes, she said, I just cannot have a relationship with a man. Something happens and it breaks up. He said, tell me about your first marriage. And she turned red and purple and blue. She said, I hate him. I was young. He lied to me. He took advantage of me. He was mean to me. Brother Barnes said, wait a minute. That's your problem. You've never gotten over him. And you bring that spirit of conflict into every other relationship. And until you get over it, you will never have a relationship. Because you can't bring the garbage of one area of your life into the next dimension of your life. Get over it. Get over it. Don't let it, don't let it haunt you. It, uh, God's just telling us here that our greatest
greatest spiritual growth comes when no one is looking and when no one understands as we wrestle with these things we grow spiritually and what was sent to destroy us actually makes us stronger you, you keep the lessons but you throw away the expression you keep the juice but you throw away the rind because chewing on that rind of yesterday's experiences will leave a bitter taste in your mouth. So get all the good you can out of it and then throw the expression away. I'll just down the road, I guess I'll learn something else. That, that's, yeah, but preacher, I'm on the devil's hit list. What? Put him on your hit list. Make him afraid every time you get up in the morning. Oh, I wish they had stayed in bed. Because I'm on their hit list. The devil is actually, when we're in action, he's more afraid of us than we should be of him. Because sin shall not have dominion over you. Friends. A lot of things are going to happen in life. I was telling Pastor last night, the biggest room in your brain better be marked, reserved for things I don't understand. Because a lot of things are going to happen. We want God to give explanations. I've often said, God's never failed to answer my prayer. Always. What? Always. But now let me tell you what his answer is a lot of times. Two words. Trust me. Now I want an explanation. I want to know a lot more than that. I want to know about the Trust me. What about next week? Trust me. What about this relationship? Trust me. Trust me is an answer. Whether we understand it or not. Trust me. I'm going, I'm going to get over it. Get over it. It's not worth going to hell over. And a mark of maturity is to know there's some problems that can't be solved. You can't undo it. You just live with it. Am I making sense? Put that overcoat of love on. Let it cover everything that's happened. Be humble and meek and forgiving. Work for unity. As, as never before. Follow peace. If you don't, if something leaves you without peace and in turmoil, turn it loose. Turn it loose. Get over it. But Brother Tenney, my critics won't quit. Huh. If my critics don't quit, and I've had plenty of them, I'm not going to let their Criticism outlast my forgiveness. As long as they can criticize, I can forgive. Because my forgiveness is stronger than their criticism. And I close with this. Some of you are thinking right now, well, I think I'm over, and here comes the devil, throwing it back in my mind again. One of the fiery darts. Well, let me tell you something. The next time the devil reminds you of something that you got over, just say, oh, I'm glad I thought of that because I'm over that and it's under the blood. And I'm going to praise God right now. And the last thing the devil wants you to do is praise God. And if him throwing that negative thought at you will make you praise God, he'll leave you alone. Hallelujah. Get over it. Let's stand. There's victory in Jesus. There's forgiveness in Jesus. There's power in Jesus. There's love in Jesus. God is more interested in developing character than solving problems. If something can't
can affect your spirit. It cannot affect your destiny. Keep it out of your spirit. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning. But whoever you are, if you want to come sign another covenant with God, Lord, help me to get over it. To close the door on it. And go on with you. And quit letting it be a haunted house. While we sing something, would you come? Come to lay it down. I've come to deal with it. It happened a long time ago.